I finally have the data you have been asking for. Vertical north-south facing panels compared to vertical east-west facing panels and 30 degree south facing panels. I love it when I get dramatic results. Look at this data set for a winter day. The vertical north-south panel is far outpacing everything else. It's beating the south facing bifacial panels by 36% and it's more than double the output of the standard panels. And these 390 watt panels are putting out 450 watts. Well, there's a reason for that, and you'll see how the story changes throughout the year. Welcome back to Projects with Everyday Dave. It's time to look at some data. I have been collecting data on this new setup for almost a year to be sure that I can bring you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I have published quite a few videos now analyzing the performance of standard and bifacial panels in various configurations, sloped installations, facing multiple directions and with adjustable tilt, bifacial panels on open racking, on roofs, with water cooling, and even vertical panels in multiple directions. Every test I've run, we learn something new, and today is no different. I would like to thank SWI Fence Company for being kind enough to support me with more fence posts so I could do my north-south facing fixture. They work great for my testing, but you'll likely need something longer and more robust for a permanent install. And I found an option for that that I'll share with you later in the video. Today, I'm comparing the performance of four different scenarios. This pair of Canadian Solar 390 watt bifacial north-south facing vertical panels, a pair of the same panels mounted vertically facing east-west against the same bifacial and similarly rated standard panels on a 30 degree open rack facing due south. The main chart shows the average power at each hour of the day in watts for a single panel. Both of these north-south panels have the A side facing south and the data is the average of the two panels. The east-west facing panels is the average of one panel facing east and one panel facing west. I have a lot more panels facing south, so it'll be an even more accurate result with an average of nine bifacials or nine standard panels. Finally, the chart in the top right-hand corner shows the total daily production for each orientation in watt hours for a single panel. I'm considering the 30 degree south facing bifacial panels to be the standard installation and the rest of the analysis will be relative to those. So the bifacial panels facing south will always be at 100% and the rest will be some fraction of that. In this case, the north-south orientation is outperforming them, so it's over 100%. This early, sunny December day is pretty typical for the midwinter months. The vertical north-south panels are beating everything. I thought they might do well in the winter, but this is much better than I expected. They have the highest peak power at almost 350 watts and the most output for the day, 18% more than the south-facing bifacial panels. The east-west panels have a dismal performance at only 56% of the south-facing bifacial panels. And that's because the sun is rising in the southeast and setting in the southwest, so the panels never get any direct sunlight in the winter. This chart is the closest sunny day that I could get to the winter solstice, December 30th. The day is very short, resulting in a lot of dead space in the morning and the afternoon. The north-south system is beating everything with a 12% benefit over the south-facing bifacial panels. The east-west orientation is very sad. The curve even looks sad, coming in at only 47% of the south-facing bifacial panels. In the dead of winter, the sun just doesn't spend very much time in the east or the west. You'll notice some degradation in all of the curves in the morning hours, and that's because in the dead of winter, when the sun is very low on the horizon, I get some filtered sun through some branches that leaves a little bit of filtered shade across the panels in the early morning. It's an annoying imperfection in my data, but hey, these are real world tests. Moving to January, I have some melting snow results. How fun is that? Look at this lovely time lapse pass Dave made for us. He is so industrious. It shows the snow melting off the panels throughout the morning. Notice the vertical panels start with no snow. The bifacial panels melt first, followed by the standard panels. The south facing panels still produce power when covered with snow because they pick up some reflection from the back side and that also helps them melt the snow faster. The standard panels produce almost nothing until the snow is completely melted off. By 11 a.m., the bifacial panels are almost clear and hitting 300 watts, but the standard panels are producing a fraction of that power at just over 50 watts. The north-south panels are again the clear winner. They're neck and neck with the east-west panels in the morning, and then they dramatically pull away as the sun moves to the south 
producing 36% more than the south-facing bifacial panels and more than double the output of the south-facing standard panels. Even the east-west panels outperformed the standard panels because they had no snow to shed. If you live in a place with a lot of snowfall, vertical panels can have a distinct advantage. Also, notice the north-south vertical panels are picking up a big boost from the sun reflecting off of the snow. The peak power for these 390-watt panels was almost 450 watts, but it gets even better than that. Check out this bright, sunny day on January the 15th. January the 15th was a bright, sunny day with snow on the ground for reflection, and it was cold, only getting into the mid-teens as the high. Ideal conditions for maximum power output, and they all performed pretty well, but nothing like the north-south panels. The low angle of the sun reflecting off the snow gave us an average panel output for the hour around noon of 465 watts, or about a 20% gain. But if I look at some of the 15-minute average data, you can see one of the panel hits at least 485 watts. That's a 24% gain over the 390-watt rating. Given the right conditions, these panels can produce far more than the rated output. The bifacial gain just gives you so many more opportunities to maximize the output. Finally, the north-south panels beat them all, coming in 31% above even the south-facing bifacial panels, which were also getting a benefit from the reflected sun. April 27th was the best sunny day I had, about midway between the winter and summer solstice, and the picture has completely changed. The days are much longer starting earlier in the day and ending later. The peak power is not as high with the higher temperature. The south-facing bifacial panels are landing right at about 400 watts, just over the 395 watt rating. The total output for a single panel over the day is quite a bit higher now at over 3000 watt hours. Now that the sun is rising in the east and setting in the west, the east-west panels are delivering that characteristic boost of power in the morning and in the evening. A very curious thing about north-south facing panels is they look like their production dropped. They only produce about 61% of the south facing bifacial panels over the day, but actually they are producing almost the same amount that they produced in the winter with no snow reflection. If we look at this chart of only the north-south panel production at different points during the year, you can see that it only drops slightly in the summer. What really stands out is that one day with the reflective snow. I imagine we could dramatically improve the north-south panel summer production if the ground around them was white instead of grass. The closest I could get to the summer solstice was June 11th. Unfortunately, as you can see from these NASA images, the Canadian wildfires were producing a smoky haze for much of the summer that was significantly reducing the system output. I was seeing about a 20% reduction in production over the summer. You can see the peak power on an otherwise perfectly sunny day has dropped to only 357 watts. But we can still look at the relative comparison between all the options. Now that the sun is much higher in the sky during the day, the north-south panels are only producing about half the daily energy that the south-facing bifacial panels can produce. Another thing you'll notice is the north-south facing panels are getting a boost in the early morning and in the late evening since the sun is rising in the northeast and setting in the northwest, the east-west facing panels really hold their own in the peak summer months, with the sun rising in the northeast and sun setting in the northwest, but they still can't beat the south-facing bifacial panels, coming in at only 75% of what's possible with the south-facing bifacial panels. Before I move to the final summary, we need to look at a cloudy day since most days in Ohio are cloudy which by the way, makes it very difficult to collect solar data. Right away, you'll notice cloudy days are not very productive, coming in at less than a third of the production of a sunny day. However, you will also notice that there was very little difference in the total daily production between each setup, but the south-facing bifacial panels were still the winner as usual. Since the clouds diffuse the light, it makes very little difference which way the panels are facing. Now to summarize the whole year. By the way, Past Dave put a lot of work into compiling all of this data. You can't just take data on one day out of the year. If you want to have useful data, you need at least six months and ideally several years of data. So if you value the time he put into this analysis, consider hitting the super thanks button or at least forwarding this content onto someone else who can make use of it.
You can also find lots more information on going solar, as well as discounts and other resources I can offer you at my website, projectswithdave.com. If we look at the total energy produced over the six-month period from winter solstice to summer solstice, they stack up pretty much how I'd expect them to. The south-facing bifacial panels, set at an optimized angle for my area of 30 degrees, is the highest overall performer, beating the standard panels coming in at 90% of optimal. The east-west panels come in at 80% of optimal, and the north-south come in at 77% of optimal. So the question is, why would you install north-south facing vertical panels? Well, I'm glad you asked. Fortunately, I have one more chart to show. This chart plots each configuration over six months showing the total monthly production. Now, in a normal year, the lines wouldn't go down in May, June, and July. That was due to the Canadian wildfires. If I shift them up by a wildfire correction factor, a typical year would look something like this. Then the value proposition for north-south facing vertical panels becomes even more clear. The production is almost constant year round. February dips a little bit, but I think that was just an unusually low February. I don't have that kind of a dip on a typical year. I think an average year would be almost perfectly straight. So if you live in the north and need about the same amount of power year round, you can avoid the snow buildup and have constant power production every month of the year. If you live in the south, you can avoid hail damage using vertical panels, and you could even add some east-west facing panels if you needed to boost the summer production for your AC consumption. By the way, Sunstall, a racking producer and installer for vertical panels with a system called Sunzon, reached out to me and sent me their information. I don't get anything if you use them, but I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check them out. If you're looking for a deal on bifacial solar panels, Signature Solar has some great options, and I'll leave my affiliate link in the description below, which does help out my channel. If you want to see more solar analysis, watch this video series right here. If you want to learn more about home solar systems, watch this video right here. Check out my free calculators and resources on my website, projectswithdave.com. And be sure and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.